Bruce Lipton, it's wonderful to have you here. Today we want to talk about brain chemistry, brain function, and probably the diseases of that, which is coming under one headline now, and that's stress, isn't it, in modern society? Most important is stress, because we've looked at all diseases, as genetic cause diseases and all that. Let's first clear that up. Only 1% of disease is connected to genes. All of a sudden, 1%. So, 1%. So why is that relevant? He said, well, what about the other 90% of illness? Wait a minute, I can hear all the scientists screaming. How do you prove that? How do you know that? Because the data is already in the literature. Genes, genes, you see, we go to the new science of epigenetics. It says a gene action is not controlled by the gene, but controlled by the environment, okay? But there are a couple of genes that, whose action alone can create a disease. But there are just a handful of diseases. Uh, hemophilia, for example, uh, Huntington's disease, just a few. Having the gene means you're going to have the disease. But when we talk about breast cancer, for example, I say, oh, well, 50% of the women with the gene don't get the disease, so the gene does not cause the disease. The gene is correlated with the disease, but itself doesn't cause it. So I say, okay, if 1% is caused by genetics, which is demonstrated, the other is due to environment plus genes, okay? But environment becomes priority. I go, well, how does it work? And I go, here is what science has recognized to be responsible for up to 90% of doctor visits. This, it's called stress. I so said, what's stress? Stress is anything that gets in the way of your plan of life. Whichever, whatever you want to do, and I want to go do this, and something gets in the way, by definition, causes stress. It interferes with your life. I said, well, how does it affect you? Well, stress is associated with fear, I'm not going to complete or get what I'm looking for because of whatever this got in the way. This is threatening me, and so I'm going to make a response to a threat. That's what stress is about. I say, well, the stress has come from the outside. My job, the environment, how much money I have, whether the, you know, what's going on in the world around me. And I say, oh, the body has a system to deal with stress from the outside. It's called the adrenal system. In high school, they used to call it fight or flight. Yeah, it's a system that protects you in a hostile environment, a stressful environment. I go, oh, well, how does it work? I say, if there's no stress, my biology is concerned with growth and maintenance of my body because I'm going to use the energy to take care of myself. But if I'm stressed, and we'll give the old, oldest example, I'm being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. The question is, well, how do you protect yourself? And the first thing is this. You're going to use your arms and legs. <laughs> You're going to run escape, or if someone's coming after you, you're going to fight, fight or flight. And I say, so what system am I using in my body? I'm not using my gut. And I say, well, the gut functions, maintenance and health of the body. I'm using my arms and legs. I say, well, I need energy in my arms and legs because if those are the structures, then I say, well, how do you get energy in the arms and legs? I say, well, blood carries energy. And I say, oh, so if I'm under stress, and this is a sentence right out of the book, when stress hormones are released into the body, the blood is preferentially sent to the arms and legs. Preferentially, first question is, well then, where's the blood preferentially if I'm not in stress? And the answer is, viscera. I go, oh, that's growth and maintenance of the body. I go, exactly. I say, then, when I'm under stress and stress hormones are released, then how does blood get to my arms and legs? And the answer is, stress hormones cause the blood vessels in the gut to constrict. And when the blood can't flow through the gut, the only other place to flow is through your arms and legs. So by squeezing the blood vessels in the gut, I'm pushing energy to the arms and legs to run. I go, yeah, but at what cost? I say, when you're in stress, by definition, maintenance, uh, taking care of the body, repairing and fixing everything in the body, visceral functions are not working. Why? They're not getting blood. There's no energy. Okay, Bruce, now take me from the saber-toothed tiger to the man in the office who's got 10 deadlines and a grumpy boss, and he's way behind, okay, and, and he's about to be get divorced from his okay. wife, and he has a phone call saying, <laughs> you will be fired if you don't finish this this exactly. afternoon. Does that same constriction happen exactly in the stomach? Exactly the same. And you may have even feel it, because you can even feel the blood vessels when they close. It's called butterflies in the stomach. Mm -hmm. When as soon as you get scared, you can feel like something is weird. And what it is, it's blood vessels squeezing because the hormones of the stress system are causing them to shut down to get ready to run. Well, why is it relevant? If I'm in fear, by definition, I'm in protection, but I'm not in growth. Growth is this. If I'm not giving this energy, I'm not growing. So I'm in a state of protection. Growth is shut off. 
I go, well, since we lose hundreds of billions of cells every day, that's normal, just normal aging and dying. Hundreds of billions of cells die every day, so I don't care what age you are. You have to grow every day in order to replace hundreds of billions of cells. So I say, well, this stress sounds like a bad idea because if I'm under stress, I'm not growing, and then my body could fall into disrepair. And I go, yeah, but think about it this way. When the system was designed, the only thing you had to be afraid of was a saber-toothed tiger. Because if you could outrun a saber-toothed tiger, no more stress. So you only used it for a short period of time, so it didn't have a negative impact on the body. It was only used for a short period of time. But now you bring up the office and the worker and all that, and I realize, guess what? It's not a few minutes. It's all day, every day, 365 days a year. You're under stress. Why? Get this finished. Why? You lose your job. Lose your job. Lose your money. Lose your money. Lose your life. <gasps> I'm under stress. All of a sudden, you realize it's not momentary anymore. It is now chronic. And that's where illness comes in because when you shut down the growth mechanisms for a long period of time, you've incapacitated the system to take care of itself and to regenerate itself. And any system has to be regenerated every day because of losing hundreds of billions of cells. So chronic stress, the world that we live in today, is actually antagonistic to our vitality because stress shuts it down. Now, and it's huge, and it's widespread. It is, it is everywhere now. Isn't it? it is everywhere. Every country, every person is under the awareness that if I don't keep up, I'm going to die. And that stress is incapacitating growth. And you have to grow, as I said, every day. So the moment you throw the monkey wrench of stress in there is the moment that you stop maintaining your body. And from there on, it's downhill because illness will start to manifest from systems that are not regenerating and you taking care of You see with John, with, with you, John, we've been talking a lot about adrenal health, and this ties in perfectly with that, doesn't it? But the, also the oxygen. worn-out adrenals. Also oxygen, because every single reaction in the body requires oxygen. Yes. So that's why we do a lot of the ozone therapy, and then we deal with stress management techniques and, and the mind-body right. stuff. Because we have to recognize, as John was talking about, very simply to close this out, we have to recognize this, is that... Stress is a belief system first. I believe I'm going to lose my job. I believe I won't get the deadline. And I say, oh, so stress isn't physical organic. It's a perception. And if you understand this, then there's an opportunity to change the perception. Thank you, Bruce, because if we rewind, you did say that. You said we see the stresses coming from outside, but in fact, it isn't. In fact, the stress is the thought about the external I action. appreciate that conclusion because that's exactly what it's all about. Wow. Biology of Belief. The exactly. Biology of Belief, a wonderful book. And also this one, which I'm, I'm, I'm putting very hard, Spontaneous Evolution, both books by Dr. Bruce Lipton, who will be joining us again next week. Thank I you, I look Bruce. forward to that. Thank so, you. Yeah.